Okay, guys, I'm going to give you a little more just review of inequalities. Um, I've given you this handout, and it's not anything that you are, you know, that you have to do, but as we're preparing and moving towards our test, I um, just wanted you to have some other resources that you could use to kind of practice, okay? So, um, I'm looking to make sure that it looks like everything is clear and not blurry. I know that last night there was an issue. So, fill in the blanks describing. So, this is just kind of a review, and then I'm going to, you've got some practice, and then I'm just going to kind of go through um, some things just to really make sure that we're ready um, for our test. All numbers, this is going to be all numbers less than zero. This means all numbers less than or equal to zero. Coming back right here. All numbers less than zero. This is going to be an open dot. Because it's less than, it's open. And we will shade to the left. This will be a closed dot and shaded left. Now remember I told you that as long as the variable is on the left, you can use your inequality symbol as kind of like a little arrow. You can kind of use this as an arrow as long as the variable is on the left. I'm get my paper straight. As long as the variable is on the left. So I'm going to write us a little note right there on our notes. That pink, I think I heard some folks saying that that pink is not a good color to use. Darken it up a little bit. As long as the variable is on the left, the inequality sign can be an arrow to shade. In other words, the inequality sign can kind of be an arrow to help you know which direction to shade. Okay, I gotta back this up a little bit, Donna. Sorry, I was trying to make sure I have everything in the Sorry, sorry. Now just staying with me a minute. I didn't realize that it wasn't lined up good. I was trying to get it as close as I could to the paper so you could see what was on the paper, but I don't guess that matters as long as you've got your paper in front of you. Okay, that looks like that's okay. And it seems to be focused. Okay. All right. So. Right here that we have, this is going to be all numbers greater than or equal to zero. So this will be a closed dot and shaded this way. It is a closed dot because it's greater than or equal to. When you see this line right here, you close it in. If you don't see a line, if you see the equal to line, you close it in. If you don't see the equal to line, you do not close it in. All numbers greater than zero. So we're going to leave that open because there's no equal to line and shade to the right. 
right. Solve any inequality by using the same process. Inverse operations. As when solving an equation. Which means that when solving an inequality, even though it doesn't have an equal sign, and it doesn't have, um, the only difference is that equal sign, you're gonna use these same steps that are on this format. You're gonna use these same steps to solve an inequality as you would solving, you're gonna draw your C, you're gonna draw your B, you're gonna zero out, you're gonna, all of those things, okay? The inequality symbol takes the place of the equal sign. Only difference, when, You multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number. You must flip the inequality. The opposite of a number will have the opposite relationship, less than or greater than to the final result. Okay, so basically, if negative x is less than zero, then x is greater than zero. So when we have a negative, we have to flip the sign. You don't, that I wouldn't worry about. You do have to know this. Which inequality would require the inequality symbol to be flipped? So here's the thing, guys. You are looking for a negative coefficient of the variable, okay? A negative coefficient of the variable will cause the inequality symbol to flip. So let's write that in our notes right here. A negative coefficient on the variable will cause the inequality symbol To flip. All right, so let's see what that means. Here's my, all right, on the variable, let's, this can also be, I'm gonna put a little arrow right here. This could also be variable term. That will make you understand a little bit better what I'm talking about. A negative coefficient on the variable term. So look right here. Here's our variable term, right? Here's the coefficient. I'm gonna highlight the coefficient. Put my yellow right here. Here's the coefficient. That coefficient is not negative. This one is a positive. That's positive, so there's no flip. Here's my variable term. Here's my coefficient. My coefficient is negative. The coefficient is negative. So that, that means that in the end, at the end, that sign will flip when we solve it. When it is solved, it will flip. Here's my variable term. One half is the coefficient on that variable. Here's, it is a negative. See that negative? That negative means it's gonna flip. Anything, in, all right? Here's my variable term. The coefficient on that variable term we know is a one. And it, that one, that invisible one that's sitting out there is positive, no flip. Here's my variable term. 
Here's my coefficient of that variable. It is positive, no flip. Here's my variable term. Here is the coefficient on that variable. It is negative, so that's in the end, that's going to have to flip. Now, here's my variable term. There's my coefficient. It's a positive 3. No flip. That negative 10 don't have anything to do with it. Here's my variable term. The coefficient here is a negative 1 which means in the end, that one would have to flip, okay? So the coefficient of the variable term determines the flip, and it'll be happening at the last step. So let's look at this one right here. And we're not doing this check step right here. All right, so let's look at how we do this. Here's my variable term. Here's my constant term. We're going through the same steps. We start with the constant. We're going to subtract 10 from both sides. That becomes a zero. Negative 2x. 8 minus 10 is a negative 2. Right now, I'm going to bring this down. Right now, I'm just going to bring it down. I'm not going to flip, do anything until I get to the end. Now, I'm dividing both sides by negative 2. This becomes my 1. But look, I've divided by a negative. That has to flip around. So, x is going to be less than a positive 1. Because negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a positive 1. So, if I put that on my number line... That's going to be an open less than positive 1, which will be an open circle because it's less than. This is an open circle and shaded to the left. And I can know it's shaded to the left because my variable's on the left. I can use this like a little arrow to show me which way to shade. Okay. I'm gonna work a couple of these and then I'm gonna just let you have it and I will post the key to this in Google Classroom for you to look at and check your work. Okay, I'm not at the moment I am not intending on working all of these. I may get on a roll and change my mind. Um, I wanna jump down and do C and make sure that you understand what we're doing here. Guys, if you will just do the steps, do the steps, variable term, constant term. You have done this a hundred times with equations. Starting with C, I'm going to subtract nine from both sides. That zeroes out leaving me with negative one half x is less than or equal to, and I'm gonna have a negative six, okay? Now, this is one half x, negative one half and x are being multiplied. The inverse of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by a negative one half. When I divide both sides by negative one half, the multiplicative inverse takes care of it because dividing by a negative one half is like multiplying by a two. You're doing reciprocals. You keep it, change it, op um, keep it, change it, flip it that you did last year with fractions. But we don't have to do all that. The calculator does it for us. So we just show that we the inverse of multiplying is dividing. I'm dividing by negative one half right here. And so, I'm gonna write it right here, x. Now, I divided by a negative. So that sign's gotta flip around. And x is going to be, 
I'm going to put negative 6 divided by negative 1 half. It's going to be negative 12. I mean positive 12. And I get a positive 12. So now if I want to show that on my number line, I'm just going to put zero right here, a positive 12 right here, and a negative 12 right here. I, you don't have to show a whole number line. X is greater than positive 12, greater than or equal to, so that's going to be a closed end dot shaded to the right. So there's what it looks like on the number line. All right, so I'm going to let you finish these and put the key for you in Google Classroom on these. So you're going to do these and put them in Google Classroom. All right. The next thing I want to do is go over this one and two step equations test practice that you should have completed in class. And now I want you checking your work. Um, again, this is additional practice for our test that's going to be coming up next week. And um, you should have completed this in class, and now we're just checking it. So, number one, which two values are not solutions for X? So, there are going to be two answers for this one. Two answers for this one. Well, the first thing we got to do is solve it. I think I need a darker color. Go back to this dark blue. So, first thing we're going to do is solve it. So, we've got a variable term, constant term. Starting with our constant term, we subtract 3 from both sides. And 5x is going to be greater than 30. Now I divide both sides by 5. I'm dividing by a positive number. I do not have to flip my sign. So x is going to be greater than 6. Now if you remember, I had you writing those solution statements. So let's write a solution statement right here. The solution set will be any number greater than six. So that's what you're looking for. The solution set's gonna be any number greater than six. So, and we want to find the ones that are not part of the solution set. Well, let's go ahead and mark, mark the ones that are. Seven and eight are part of the solution set. Five and six are not part of the solution set. We want the ones that are not part of the solution set. So our answer here is A and B. So our answer here is A and B. All right, looking at this one. Which of the following inequalities would require the symbol to be flipped? We're looking for a negative coefficient with the variable term a negative coefficient with the variable term. Well, here's my variable term. Seven is positive. It can't be that one. Here's my variable term that has a positive one right there. It can't be that one. Here's my variable term that has a positive eight right there. It can't be that one. Here's my variable term that has a negative three. So this problem right here in the end is going to require that the inequality symbol be flipped around. Number three, solve for x. Here we go. Variable term, constant term. We're going to add nine to both sides we get x divided by two is greater than 
four. I'm going to have to move it back and forth, I think. X divided by two is greater than four. Now, this is X divided by two. This is X divided by two. So in order to do the inverse of dividing by two, we multiply by two. That leaves us X is greater than a positive eight. We did not use a negative, so A would be our answer. Number four, variable term, constant term. We're gonna subtract 14 from both sides first. That becomes a zero. Bring down that negative five X is less than 19 minus 14 is five. Now we're going to divide both sides by negative five because X is being multiplied by negative five. Negative five times X, the inverse of that's going to be dividing by negative five. Divide this side by a negative five. I'm dividing by a negative. So I like to circle those just to remind my brain to do something with it. This becomes a one and X is going to be greater than or equal to a negative one. This sign had to flip around because we were dividing by a negative. So our answer there is C. All right, number five. Which inequality has the solution set, solution set shown on the graph? Well, this one is much easier than it looks. And um, based on what we know now from looking at coefficients and that kind of stuff, we're not gonna have to do a whole lot. First of all, this sign right here, this closed up, this closed up means that I'm gonna, closed up shaded to the right means that I'm gonna have a greater than or equal to at the end. Well, knowing that, this one and this one are not greater than or equal to, so I can get rid of those two. They're gone. Your next knee jerk reaction is gonna go to B to go to A. Well, A, but think about it now. It's gotta end up like this. And we got a negative right there, a negative coefficient. So it's gonna be answer choice B right here because that negative is gonna cause that sign to flip around. So in the end, this one is gonna have that sign at the end. <laughs> this negative is gonna cause that sign to flip. So in the end, that one's gonna look like that. So it can't be A either. So the answer here is B. We didn't even have to work it, but we're gonna. We're gonna work it just to be sure that our answer is right. Why is my pen acting stupid? Okay, so I'm gonna, here's my variable term. Here's my constant term. I'm gonna subtract nine from both sides. I'm gonna have to get another pen. That one needs to go in the garbage. That one is going in the trash. It has gotten broken or something. Right. Subtracting nine from both sides. Now, this held up, so this got some folks hung up a little bit. I brought my negative four X down right here. Bring my symbol down right here. Nine minus nine is zero. And zero is not your enemy. And here's the thing, guys. We gotta end up at zero right there anyway. So we know we're heading in the right direction. 
we divide both sides by negative four, you're probably gonna get a calculator error because it's gonna tell you you can't do it. And X is going to be greater than or equal to zero because that's gonna be zero and this has to flip around because I divided by a negative. Okay, well let's take that same thought process and try with number six. Which inequality has the solution set shown? Well, this means I'm going to have a neither greater than or equal to, well look, I have an open dot shaded left. So that means I'm going to be doing this, okay? Well, that means that answer choice A and B are gone because those two right there are not the right symbol. Now, on these, the coefficient of our variable term is positive, which means no flipping is gonna happen. So, answer choice C is going to be my answer. But let's check it to be sure. All right. Here's my variable term. Here's my constant term. I'm going to add 12 to both sides. That becomes 0. 10x is less than a negative 20. Divide both sides by 10. And x is going to be less than negative 2. And there we go. X is less than negative 2. Perfect. All right. Don't let this next one mess you up. This next problem is the easiest. I mean, it is just a simple, simple, simple one-step equation. But because we've done so much with two-step equations, these tend to throw you for a loop. And it cracks me up when it happens because I'm thinking y'all are taking the easiest ones and making a mountain out of a molehill. But let's look at this. All right, so we've got two, I'm gonna rewrite it right here. Negative two X is less than or equal to negative 10. If you'll remember back when we started working with equations, I told you that our ultimate goal was to get a positive one coefficient with our variable. All right. Sometimes you're going to have one operation in the way. Sometimes you're going to have two operations in the way. If you come back up here to number one, we see we had addition and multiplication right there. We had two operations in the way before we finally got down here to our positive one coefficient on X. In number three right here, we had subtraction and division in the way before we got down here to our positive one coefficient of X. Right here on number seven, we have multiplication in the way. That's it. There is no, we don't have to do two things. We're only gonna have to do one. So I look right here and I see that two is being multiplied by X. Negative two is being multiplied by X. So I'm gonna divide both sides by a negative two and X, notice if I'm dividing, look at there, it's a negative. I gotta flip that around and I get a negative five. And I get, I'm sorry, that's a positive five. It's gonna be positive five. Y'all see why I use my, so greater than or equal to means that C and B are going away because they have an open dot. And it's greater than or equal to five, so D is gonna be the answer here. All right, number eight. One third X minus four is less than negative 10 
Here's my variable term. Here's my constant term. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. 0. 1 third x is less than a negative 6. 1 third is being multiplied by x. So I'm going to divide by 1 third on both sides. And x is going to equal a negative 18. It's not going to equal it, though. It's going to be less than a negative 18. I do that a lot. I forget and put an equal sign right there. It's going to be less than. I did not have to flip it because I did not divide by a negative. It is a less than symbol, which means it's got to be open, which is good. And it's a negative 18. Well, that's got a negative. That starts at negative 2. That starts at negative 2, so those can't be it. This one's pointing to the right, which means greater than, so that can't be it. And here it is. All right, and on these last two, they were error analysis. And remember, when you do error analysis, you always want to work the problem yourself first. When I put the key in Google Classroom, I will put the work for these in there. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the answer on these so that we don't get too long in our video. We're right at 30 minutes. So on this one, when you work it, you're going to find that there was no error. They were fine. On this one, when they worked it, they did not flip the sign. So the step, here's where the error was right here. In this last step, when they went from here to here, this should have flipped around. They were dividing by a negative, so that sign should have flipped. So that's their error. All right, so I will be posting this key for you to look at. I will post this key for you to look at, and I'm gonna post this key for you to check your work. Actually, yeah, for you to check your work on these. Okay, so I want you to work these, and I mean, or you can. I mean, like I said, a lot of this is just um, going to be just extra practice for you at this point, um, getting ready for your test. So let me know if you have any questions.